Dinosaurs and mammals don't have a lot in common, but we did both solve an age-old problem, albeit in very different ways. Breathing is a complex process, and animals have a multitude of methods with which they can do this. In tetrapods, or land vertebrates, our ancestors began by gulping air with their mouths. Eventually, as our ribs became more flexible to aid in locomotion, they contributed to a new kind of breathing, costal breathing. This is where muscles expand the ribs to create negative pressure in the body cavity, causing the lungs to inflate with air. This has a major drawback though, it means that breathing is now affected by movement. The side-to-side -side movement of reptiles and other early amniotes causes one lung to inflate while the other deflates, making for extremely inefficient breathing as the animal moves. This is why lizards can only run for short bursts, and need to stop to catch their breath after. So how do we solve this issue? We decouple our breathing from our movement. In mammals, we have a muscular diaphragm that contracts to create the pressure to pull air into the lungs, independent of movement of the spine and the limbs. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, generally show two different methods of breathing. Ornithischians like hadrosaurs and ceratopsians likely had a special muscle that functioned similarly to a diaphragm, but instead was anchored to the hips and physically pulled the lungs open. Saurischians, however, use what's called cuirassal breathing, where muscles in their tail and hips pull on their gastralia, or belly ribs, to create the negative pressure necessary for breathing. Modern birds do something similar, pulling on their sternum directly instead of gastralia and tensing their back for a bit of added leverage. So we may not have a lot in common with dinosaurs, but at least we can both breathe while we run.